Hi, good afternoon. Uh, Christian Lovich, my name. I'm working for Block Size Capital. Um, and as introduced, this presentation will be about um, crypto infrastructure. Um, and I'd like to touch especially on the digital asset part of it and how actually institutions are reshaping capital markets already. So just thinking about institutional crypto infrastructure, um, I think we have to admit that a lot of institutions already started building it. Um, we saw a lot of very interesting presentation from fintechs, um, startups in that field um, that bring very good technology into that market. But also on the other side, we see that a lot of significant players all around the globe are already working on exactly building that infrastructure um, to build what they need in order to access that market. This is just a view on exchanges and CSDs. Um, honestly, we have not updated that for a couple of months now, but still, I mean, you get the impression. Uh, you see big names such as DTCC, Deutsche Börse, of course, um, SDX, uh, one of the very um, well-progressed um, projects in, in Europe, the SGX, SET in Thailand. Um, and this is just a view of CSDs uh, and exchanges uh, that already build infrastructure to issue uh, and settle digital assets. Um, on the other side, we also have commercial banks uh, that already started looking into that, such as HSBC, but also German banks um, that already did transactions um, using DLT, for example, for promissory loans, syndicated loans, commercial papers. Um, and we see that they are actively shaping um, this environment and um, capital markets. So. The, the question that we want to answer um, in the next 18 or 17 minutes is actually what are the key components of infrastructure that the market, especially institutions in that market, need? So what will change? What will become obsolete? And what are new components that are necessary for making that work? And um, by answering that question, we have to look quickly into mechanisms and how currently capital markets are set up and then see how actually this will be changed, transformed through the use of DLT in capital markets. So at the moment, we have a more sequential way of communicating and exchanging information in capital markets. We have a system which has been specifically designed to reduce counterparty risk by regulation especially to an acceptable minimum that makes our capital market efficient, that allows through the use of an independent, highly regulated third party to exchange assets and cash in that market and make it work. And this works through exchanging information and reconciling. So as you can see, information are flowing in a specific sequence and we have some specific key players that are highly relevant for facilitating transactions in capital markets. And that's mainly the CSD and that's the CCP. So um, especially the CSD is highly relevant because it keeps the records and says and states as the ultimate point of truth who is owning what securities. This is the ledger, this is the registry that contains the ultimate proof of ownership for securities. And um, through the use of blockchain, you can see that actually this party, the centralized party keeping the ledger, um, could potentially become obsolete because DLT as a technology could perform that role. Also, we've been speaking about cash on ledger, atomic swaps instead of DVP. Um, so that also means that some functions, for example, a CCP currently takes over, could be performed purely by technology. And this system um, could be changed through use of DIT because the way how information will flow between market particip participants will change. All of a sudden, through that new technology, that new infrastructure, it is not necessary to reconcile information in order to keep them consistent, but rather you can access a distributed ledger that has all information available with the same consistency. And all stakeholders, um, of course, considering privacy, could access those information without any conflicts in data or any um, inconsistencies. And that also means that you can see some of the roles which are um, displayed in gray, they won't be affected. 
they still perform vital roles, of course, to the capital market, such as a regulator, a broker, an exchange, but also custodians. But we also see that some of the roles that we currently have in capital markets, key components of infrastructure, in fact, will not be needed um, in a DLT-based capital market infrastructure. But we also have new roles um, that are currently not relevant for existing capital market infrastructure, but through the use of DIT, they will be. And I also believe that exactly those roles, they will be the key infrastructural elements that we have to understand first, that we have to regulate in a proper way, um, and that also needs to be built uh, on reliable infrastructure and technology. And these are, so to say, the ingredients that we need to build a DLT-based capital market. So what will change in detail? Let's have a look at the specific roads. Um, something that will drastically change is the way that assets um, are being issued. Currently, most of the assets or some of them are dematerialized. Okay, You take a deed, you store that deed, and then you represent a, that deed or that note by a digital representation, which is the process called dematerialization. In fact, also through um, the latest regulatory um, initiatives, um, securities um, and assets will become fully digital. That means instead of dematerializing them, you will digitize them. Um, uh, uh, and they only exist on this distributed ledger, which is the registry um, that tracks ownership of those um, assets. And for that, um, issuers won't have the competence to build smart contracts reflecting um, and representing the underlying rights and obligations of a security. So that means there will be some tech providers or some service providers that actually have the technical capability of translating a security and all its rights and obligations into a smart contract and make sure that the security actually, or the smart contract, represents fully that security. That means it is capable of performing um, corporate actions and other um, events, corporate events that we have associated with that specific asset that they are representing. We will need, um, and I think we've discussed that, um, a digital asset registrar that could act as a notary. This party is not maintaining or is not keeping a centralized ledger. It is rather ensuring consensus in, for example, permission um, platforms or protocols. That means they will add specific transactions to the decentralized ledgers and by that ensuring consensus. They also will um, provide settlement finality by notarizing specific transactions. So they perform a service function that will be vital for capital markets. We will need gatekeepers, gatekeepers that ensure a AML compliant onboarding of parties, a constant screening of wallet addresses, for example, and also we use a concept of whitelisting associated or in relation um, to blockchain that allows um, a security token or any tokenized asset to only travel between whitelisted public keys. Okay, And there could be, for example, service functions that only focus on whitelisting um, um, issuers or also investors and provide that regulatory service to the capital market. Then, my personal opinion is I don't see in the near future that CBDC or any central bank digital currency could be used for settlement within capital market networks. Um, and we've discussed that, for example, with Bank of Thailand in one of the projects that we did. Uh, and um, my decision uh, or my advice would clearly be at the current stage that you use your own representation of, for example, the euro in that network in order to settle. And of course, by that, utilizing the full benefits uh, of DAT in capital markets. So that means for that, you will need a cash tokenizer and a cash on ledger issuer a regulated institution that provides cash on ledger as a utility settlement coin in that network to provide that um, a cash um, and allow atomic swaps to happen instead of using a standard or classical DVP delivery versus payment um, for settling transactions. Then, of course, the regulator, the regulator could theoretically through operating a node um, access the network 
whether they want it or not, that's another discussion. Um, but theoretically, that'd be possible. And of course, the regulator clearly provides the framework and enforces regulation also for a DLT-based capital market setup. We've got a broker, an exchange, and digital asset custodian. In my opinion, I believe that specifically for cryptocurrencies, where we have so many exchanges and new coming up every day with um, quite significant spreads in pricing and a lot of intransparency about where the best price for execution is, I personally believe that the broker will become, um, for cryptocurrencies, um, even more important because I mean, what is the function of a broker? It's, it's price discovery, transparency, and for cryptocurrencies, I think this is a very important feature that the capital market needs, and it's providing liquidity and facilitating settlement. So I believe especially um, that for cryptocurrencies, the broker will be highly relevant in the future still for digital assets. This is the bridge also between, for example, a, second, um, a secondary market trading venue and the custodian, uh, respectively the trader, of course exchanges this is the venue where prices are being negotiated with uh, the maturity of blockchain even now i don't see how for example an order book could be uh, could be running on dlt simply we do not have the throughput so i believe exchanges to still operate um, a, a centralized order book uh, but then interact through interfaces or operating a node directly with that network and of course we need that liquidity is in fact what the entire security token market needs and exchanges will significantly provide to that. And then we have custodians. Um, but now their role will be different. They will be digital asset custodians instead of storing the asset in their centralized system and reconciling with the CSD, for example. They will perform another service, which is storing private keys. And for spring private keys, they will need um, specific um, custody uh, infrastructure. And that could be provided by a digital asset vault. Of course, um, uh, in principle, whoever is operating that network will need that infrastructure components, but also custodians, and you see that by just checking the news, are uh, already uh, getting into um, implementing crypto custody solutions, because this is the infrastructure they need to store private keys on behalf of their clients. And so digital asset vaults or custody infrastructure from a technical perspective will also be highly relevant, and it will serve not only network operators, issuers, but specifically, of course, investors um, uh, through, through their respective custodians. These are the key building blocks. And looking at capital market infrastructure, I see three highly relevant um, areas that most likely will change. This is the securities market, this is the asset servicing, um, and this is the derivative market. In fact, we already have live platforms purely running on DLT for futures. And um, to make that capital market work, we're going to introduce three ledgers, distributed ledgers that actually do nothing else than recording in a distributed system ownership um, of different assets in that network. One for assets, one for cash, because we're not using CBDC in that network. We rather issue our own uh, cash on cash representation and a ledger or registry to keep... Um, uh, records of derivatives. And these three areas um, will be affected by DLT, and this is what we need to build. For the securities market, you can see that now stakeholders interacting with each other using DLT, they have to operate nodes. That means they're directly joining that network in order to send signed transactions and interact with that network. Also, I said it, the exchange is highly important. The exchange will still be the marketplace for negotiating transactions at prices. But instead of sending a settlement instruction, the exchange could operate a node and directly send signed transactions to update the ledger to that network, broadcast it. By introducing those two registries, um, and that could also be, for example, Ethereum, right? The CSD as the centralized bookkeeper that ensures uh, ownership and records ownership will become obsolete. In fact, we're replacing that role through DLT. And also, because we are not um, clearing and settling cash transactions in that network um, through DVP, but rather through an atomic swap where we simultaneously swap asset versus cash. And this is something that the smart contract does. In fact, this is something that, they, that the program security does, right? 
by introducing that and using that, we're also eliminating the CCP in that. And this is something that could affect the securities market um, as it operates today. For asset servicing, um, you, for example, have dependent on the jurisdiction transfer agents, and they do a similar job to the CSD, just for mutual fund shares. They keep the registry of ownership for mutual funds. And um, of course, that could also be performed um, by, uh, by, by the blockchain, right, as a, as a as a registry. Also, in fact, if we want to go a little bit further, you could argue that the custodian performing the role of safekeeping assets could be also replaced by a smart contract. Just imagine that all assets will be tokenized, then in fact the safekeeping of those tokenized assets could be done by a smart contract. You don't need an entity to do that. It could be done by technology. And then also smart oracles could provide NAVs, right, uh, and allow um, those reporting to be used in smart contracts. And uh, then, of course, a very interesting market, the derivative market, um, where you have specific contracts such as futures, right? Um, and margin calls, for example, or, or managing the collateral for that could be also performed by smart contracts. That means the collateral won't be managed by a CCP, for example, but rather by a smart contract. And we already have platforms such as Synthetix that provide that functionalities and prove that within a limited scope, of course, um, this is already reality. Then prices, reference prices for futures, for example, or for any derivative, they could be incepted into that network, into that infrastructure by smart oracles. Also here we have providers such as Chainlink that do exactly that. They bridge the traditional world with the blockchain world. And um, this is also something where we expect a lot of changes and where we currently see that the building blocks are being being introduced and being provided by especially institutions. So just looking at the overall picture, you could see that the way of interaction between capital market um, participants will change. Also, the entire technology stack will change. Um, they won't be reconciling information in a sequential way, but rather through operating a node, which allows them to send and receive transactions, they will be um, interacting with each other. And these are the building blocks that are currently being built. And also just looking at recent regulation, I believe that this is something that could become reality uh, in the next couple of years. So many thanks um, for listening in. Um, any questions, um, directly reach out to me and I'm more than happy to uh, be in touch after that.